Yo, what's up guys? Another Siege video playing against Aftermath EU and my old guild Dal. So starting off once again, bunch of TN Lang kind of hits. We got a Maximilian those. We, we got a Nefties those. You, you know what's up. We, we got a clear those pretty hard. This is one of my favorite teams right now. I definitely do feel like that this is one of the better teams for clearing things out. Uh, once again, if you don't have the Maximilian, just use it with a Truffle. It's pretty much as strong. Maybe even slightly strong. But yeah, I got to use my LDs, right? <laughs> That's what I was saying. Um, this one, I do have a variation to this as well with the um, Amber and the Robo and then using a Tomoe. I think it's pretty much for this situation as strong. Um, but yeah, I have both, so I, t I tend to use both. I, I, I just like these teams. That's the chill thing for me in Siege. I can just start off with like two of those hits and just get like pretty fast, easy hits in early on. Because there's a whole bunch of those Bjornjols that you can always hit. Then the next one, which is actually exactly that one team... Good thing about this is you have the backup strip there. Um, you want your Amber to move uh, in between the Tomoe, and then your Tomoe can spread later on. I kind of think I can speed tune them a little bit better and make them a little bit faster and stuff. But yeah, this team in general is just super solid. There's just so much stuff going on, and too many dots, too many enemy free thing, too many spreads. Um, th this is just a super solid team out there. If you have the Dark Robo and the other two units, I would absolutely ruin up this team. It's just super solid in general and for the runes it's pretty simple uh you just want to make swift on the robo max accuracy to moe uh this pair max accuracy and then the amber has to move uh right after the to moe and then i would recommend violent on that one so yeah next team was a team with a uh, narsha we do see a whole bunch of uh beast monks these days that's also well the thumbnail i guess um i haven't seen the hit yet but yeah you can only use it once right <laughs> so that's kind of the thing <laughs> But yeah, we definitely do see a lot of Beast Monks also on defense. And I definitely do think we're going to see quite a lot of those Beast Monks on defense throughout. I would say Retash is maybe not that great. Uh, Shazam, you definitely do see quite some. Chandra, of course, you see a lot. And Kumar is maybe the one that you would be like, ah, is this the one that's actually going to be useful at some point? Because uh, Kumar, I think, has a very loaded kit. If you just read what that skill 1 all does, it's insane. Also, you tend to see a lot more seal runes right now, but seal runes, I'm still not really sure if I really like it that much. Like, I still rather just give will or destroy or something like that. Like, oh, I can't proc out right now. It's like, yeah, as if I need it. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the thing right now. It's like, yeah, that's maybe something that could give you a win or a lose potential at some point. But in the end, it would be nice if seal also, if it prevents something of happening, it would also say like, oh, prevent it. And then you would see like, ah, oh, shit, now I missed out on a fire proc. Because now if seal does or is there, you still don't see if it actually worked or not. Next hit in with the Sonya. Uh, on the Sonya, I always do tend to switch to attack up effect in case you do have some Odins here and there that are uh, high on defense as a trap. So 37% attack increasing effect. That is mostly enough to kill most of those things. And this is definitely one of those fights where you definitely see Chandra shine a little bit more. Because before, this team, especially with the Puppeteer in the middle, wasn't that strong. It didn't really do all too much. But since the Chandra does do a decent amount of damage on skill 1 right now, you can actually see that the Chandra does get quite a bit more danger. So it gets for the additional turn. And then just, yeah, casual chipping away that damage by quite some, which used to be a lot less damage before. So... That's definitely a nice improvement for the Chandra, and yeah, like I said, you're gonna see a lot of Chandras on defense, that's that's definitely thing, it has the speed lead. Back in the days, Chandra did so much nothing, man, there was no speed lead, there was lower base awakening, there was, was there even an additional turn after the hug, there, 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 was, there was no boost on the skill 3. It's one of those units that already got like 16,000 buffs or some shit. Okay, there I had the slow, so because of the slow I didn't do jack shit of damage. Um, Puppeteer, I'm still not sure if I really like the Puppeteer here in the middle, but I think this one was actually on crit rate itself, because even the skill 2 was doing, or the skill 3 was doing quite some damage. But yeah, he doesn't have all too much healing except from the Puppeteer itself, but still made it a little bit of more of a wonky fight than what you normally would like to see. In this case, I was like, oh, I'll just wait for the skill 3 to come up, otherwise I might just not, or might just kill, and since I'm fully focused on attack increasing effect, 
Without an attack buff, you don't do too much. Without an or with an attack buff, you do a little bit more. This is also one of those hits I do tend to like to hit, especially on things that I expect to be slower than me. So all of those three units are pretty much swift. Um, if you don't have a Lima, you can always use a Wusa in the middle, and then you still use Odin and Kiara or the Dark Cassandra, whatever you have. Um, might this be a little bit of a tricky fight against the Byunchu? Uh, maybe so, but the thing is, Byunchu is not the best of strippers into something that is that many uh, buffs. And because of that, I felt like it was kind of okay to do it. Plus, the uh, Sylvia in this case would always hit a Lima. So Lima's a little bit better in this specific fight than a Wusa would be. Then next fight where we do have the Kumar in there, but we also... I kind of needed a light tank, and I was like, ah, I have this as a light tank right now. I'm throwing all my LDs at it, man. But yeah, this fight, um, it did have armor breaks on the Shazam, but I was like, okay, the Fermion is always going to be hitting on the Acroma, so that's not really dangerous. Uh, we have the Byuncho always hitting on the Demon, so that's definitely not dangerous. Before, we used to use a lot of teams uh, with a, what's it called, with a Windy, the moment we use this. We can still get armor broken, but uh, the thing about the Byuncho, Byuncho will still not hit fire, so that part makes it a little bit more chill. The only thing is, if I start to get provokes right now, it will get a little bit bad for that. But we do instantly get the revenge, because the um, mine was on revenge with the Kumar, so that definitely did help out a little bit as well. I just need to get not provoked right now. I get a good free, uh, a good healing in, and then it should be all fine. So let's see. Do we get the healing? Yep. And then meditate does do an insane amount of healing. So yeah, definitely would say Kumar is a really insane unit. Would I say that Akroma was the best uh, light tank here? Well, the thing is, Akroma is, it's a really selfish unit. Like it's a good tank, but it is really a selfish unit where it doesn't provide any healing. It doesn't provide pretty much anything anywhere. It's just good at tanking stuff and good at uh, providing the glance slash silence. So it, it's somewhat good for that part. But I would say besides that, it would have maybe been better to have some unit that could provide some healing here and there as well. Maybe just as simple as a molly. I think, yeah, to be honest, as simple as a molly, molly would have probably done pretty good over here as well. Shit would have been hit pretty hard by the Pyuncho, but in the end, the Acroma damage also did nothing in here. It was just waiting for the Belial to come back, so... Let's actually speed this up by a little bit. Yay, speeding it up. This takes fucking forever, especially if Bunchel dies. <laughs> I also didn't have Destroy on the Acroma nor the uh, Kumar because Kumar was on Revenge. I definitely do like Revenge Kumar the most because the kit of Kumar is just so freaking loaded that uh, getting a random skill one in is just very helpful. So... Yeah, the fight because of that did take a, a little long, but in the end it did work. But I would say a molly on the spot of the Acroma was probably better. Then the next fight, um, we do have a Josephine buff as well, where Josephine does get higher shields. So I was like, I might as well give that a try. In this case, I just needed something to aggro the uh, Theomars and probably not be able to land it on that much. Would I say that just using a simple... Um, Amelia would work here as well. I would say so, but in this case, actually, the Light Pony does feel a little bit stronger, mainly because you don't have that issue of uh, Tessarion hitting the Josephine. That, that's the main thing. You don't really want Tessarion to hit the Josephine and get rid of the passive, but I would say an Amelia here kind of would do the same thing as well. It, it doesn't really change too much, but in this case, it was easier to prevent like what is hitting what. And I would definitely say that uh, Josephine in certain hits, especially against uh, Celia's, does feel pretty strong because in the end, the unit can't really do too much. Uh, they also have zero sustain on their team, so I'm not sure if I'm liking the team on the enemy side in the first place. But if you just slow clear it, you do have the uh, healing from the NFL, NFL's 100 dress. I don't really expect the Sarions to be like uh, 85 accuracy. Plus those shields, you do actually notice that those shields are pretty hefty on uh, how much shield there is. Because look at that, nothing. <laughs> That's like, okay, it was slow, that helps out a bit as well. But still, uh, credit on that, nothing. So you definitely do notice that the shields of Josephine are pretty big. So if you're fighting teams that do tend to stun all the time, the Josephine might actually be a pretty interesting pickup for a siege offense as well. And I definitely do like the... I used to use uh, Josephine next to... Amelia with a Manx, which was also a very strong combination because Manx skill 3 
does do a lot of damage and you only need the armor break. So you do provide a lot of sleeps and a lot of stuns on that whole team. Haven't used it too much because I feel like there's not too many sleepers out there that really would do enough. And in this case, I'm more, I, I kind of more needed a tank than a full-on damage on, the, on that one because they don't have any sustain and this way, super easy to sustain, right? But yeah, definitely Josephine Annafel will probably be using that a little bit more. Then for my next fight, we had against a Giselle. So if I see Giselle, it's always Sami. But I started the recording and the game picked up as whatever. And then I was like, okay, is that an issue? Uh, yeah, that was an issue. So rip. <laughs> I have no clue how that happened, what that was. I recorded more than like 10,000 clips on my phone. First time that that happened, but probably some spaghetti goat. Was kind of sad about that hit though. And then the final hit. This is definitely a defense you do tend to see quite a lot. And this is one of those five hat offenses that is just insanely good. You have the two water units with uh, damage reduction from uh, wind. Insanely tanky. And then you just have the Laika cleaning up the Carcano. Like you got a good hit over there. But Ariel has great healing. And you just tend to go for the Carcano first. You simply clear that. It is very easy to clear that because uh, even in that state, the Wusa skill 2 still works, the Leica skill still works, so it's super easy to clear. And then from there, it's just a simple cleanup. Just have to make sure that the uh, Odin uh, yeah, doesn't really get a chance to hit anything at low HP. But yeah, just top off the HPs. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that the uh, Pure Vanilla Cookie might drop a um, Oblivion on the Leica. So therefore, you have to make sure that your Leica is not super fast. And yeah, that, that's just pretty much it. Because Odin will not start hitting Leica unless it has five stacks. So for that reason, just that. Also, it's it's pretty doable to survive like a good hit of a good Odin. That's It's, it's just very doable to survive that. And from there, it's just kind of cleaning up, right? Leica is actually one of the few units I don't have any... Oh, same for Ariel. Ariel and Leica are a few units that I don't have any skins on. But yeah, as you can see, it does decent amount of damage, but it's still kind of struggling. I did notice at some point it's easier to kill the pure vanilla cookie first and then actually kill the Odin. But yeah, a very simple, very solid hit. So yeah, that was a 9 out of 10, and mainly because of that one failed hit. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it is. Uh, I did report it, and uh, I'll just see if it happens again. Hopefully not either out, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and see you as always in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see more guides, join the Discord and check out the content tab, which has the dungeon guide archive and the video guide archive, which contains all of the guides that you need. Hope to see you there.